Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, welcome. This is Dr. Jacobs. In this video, I'm going to go over how to stop golfer's elbow pain or medial epicondylitis pain. So before we do that, we need to understand what is a golfer elbow, the causes, the risk factors, and then we're going to go over detail of how to stop golfer's elbow pain at home. So first, um, what is golfer elbow? So it's a very typical to have a damage in the medial side of your elbow. It's like here, the inner side of your elbow, and that's when you start to have like uh, the symptoms of golfer elbow. So it's damage to fl the flexors of your wrist, so the motion that actually uh, you flex in your wrist, and also pronation, which is this motion turning. So mostly you will feel pain with those motion, and those uh, the damage you can see here right where that tendon attached to the bone in this area you can see the tear here and this is magnified uh, image here that tear in the tendon area so symptoms so typically you will have pain in the inner part of your elbow and you start to feel like maybe dull aching pain or some burning pain you start to have weaknesses especially with uh, flexing your your rest so this motion flexing and pronation which is actually turning your arm downward like this you will start to have pain in the medial part or sometimes it's radiated in the forearm so pain dif difficulty with opening a doorknob, holding a cup, shaking hands, gripping an object. And pain typically, that's one of the tests we do in physical therapy, is to resist the rest flexors. And that usually trigger the pain or stimulate the pain or resisting pronation. And you start to feel pain here. That's one of the tests we do to confirm if you have a uh, golfer's elbow. So... The causes of golfer elbow. Uh, sports, it's very common with tennis, playing tennis, playing baseball, softball, football, and that's usually happen either not warming up enough or overtraining. And I will have videos on how to avoid that and proper warm up in the future. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get notification for those videos. So the other thing is weight training um, that could uh, trigger or cause uh, golfer's elbow. Occupation like uh, carpenter, plumbing, or construction. So it's mostly likely repetitive motion that actually cause a lot of strain on this area that cause micro tear or tear in the tendon here that stimulate it. So risk factors, over 40 years old, uh, as I said, repetitive wrist elbow activities. Also, obesity and smokers are uh, two risk factors that could increase your risk of having tennis uh, golfer's elbow. So how to treat golfer's elbow? Before I answer this question, we really need to understand the normal healing cycle. Because if we know how our body heal, it will be easy to treat the root cause of the problem instead of focusing on the symptoms. So I'm going to go over quickly the normal healing cycle and um, so we can understand how to treat it properly. So uh, I'm going to use external paper cut for visualization, but the same process happened internally in the elbow area. So the first stage of healing is inflammation. And as you see here in the image, swollen redness, the blood starts to rush that area and pain. And also you can see it here in this image. That's inflammation, swelling in here. Some people can visually see the swelling. Other it could be internal that you cannot see it. So the second stage of healing is a proliferation stage. That's when your body starts to build the scar tissue. Your body has to build the scar tissue. Because if you have a tear here and your body has not built the scar tissue, that tear will be uh, will never going to heal. Scar tissue is like the glue that uh, hold all the tear tissue together. We need a scar tissue. That's happening in the proliferation stage. The problem is when you have too much scar tissue, that's going to cause all other issues. So during the proliferation stage, the, there is a cascade of events like fascia restrictions, muscle spasm, trigger points, and 
so we have to address all of these simultaneously. Uh, why scar tissue could be an issue? Because our muscle should act like a rubber band. When it contracts and relaxes, it should stretch like this. So when you have a scar tissue, it's like you have a knot in a rubber band. So when your muscle contract, it does not stretch much. And that's what typically happen with the golfer's elbow. You start to build a lot of scar tissue, and when you palpate, you might feel nods. You know, and uh, and when that limit the when you have excessive scar tissue, it will limit the range of motion, and that's why you start to have issue when you do wrist flexion or pronation or you do resistance because your muscle is not able to fully contract. Perfect scenario actually during the maturation stage, your body should get rid of the scar tissue, the fascia restriction, and everything, and everything is healed. That's perfect scenario. If you have chronic golfer's elbow with the chronic inflammation, this is typically happen when you are going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation. And we have to address this vicious cycle simultaneously. Because if you work on inflammation and you do not release the scar tissue, the fascia restriction, that is not a complete treatment. And the scar tissue, the fascia restriction, could cause more inflammation. So we have to break this vicious cycle. So now, what is the treatment for uh, golfer's elbow? I'm gonna go over a very common treatment that's actually not effective, so you don't have to waste your time uh, using those treatment, and then we'll go over the full treatment. So, one of the common things I've been used and I've been using after graduation from PT school is ice and heat, ice temporarily decrease inflammation, but when we look back to the healing cycle, it does not really do much to the proliferation stage and it's not prolonged uh, uh, decreasing the inflammation. It's temporary. The other thing is electric stimulation. It's temporary decreasing pain um, uh, for a half an hour to an hour max. So it does not really address anything in the inflammation stage or the proliferation stage. The other thing that's commonly used foam roller. If you have severe inflammation and you have you rub it with the foam roller, that's gonna cause more inflammation. And I will go over in a few seconds why foam roller is not effective to, to address the proliferation stage when we go over the, pro, the anatomy of, uh, of fascia restrictions and uh, the fibrosis. Massage is the same thing. You don't want to massage something inflamed because it's going to inflame it more. And anatomically, it's impossible when you use your knuckle, your elbow, or your hand to break deep adhesion. It's impossible to go deep. Uh, so that you need to have a tool to really go deep to decrease uh, the uh, scar tissue or release the fascia. And based on the study, it provides temporary pain relief. There's no long-term effect of the massage. The other thing is a stretching. It's very common that um, a lot of people do stretching, but the problem with that, when you have a tear in the muscle or you have a knot in the muscle like here, if you overstretch, you're gonna tear it more. And based on the studies, actually stretching cause more inflammation. So I don't recommend the stretching to my patient. There is much more effective way and safe way to work on the muscle than the stretching. A strength, a strength exercises, we introduce that on the right time. Because if you introduce it in the inflamed uh, stage, that will make it more inflamed and cause more scar tissue. So strengthening exercise, we introduce it after we decrease the inflammation. Now, how we treat the root cause of the problem. So we need to dissect the healing cycle and work on each of stage of this healing cycle to really break it. So inflammation, what I usually do, if you are in acute stage, uh, rest, stop the repetitive motion that causes it, like it's basketball or tennis or any other uh, repetitive motion that causes pain. Usually, typically, if you are in acute stage three, five days, that should be good enough to actually get your inflammation under control. If your pain has not gone down, and you still have pain, uh, pain after five days, that's a sign of you might have moderate to severe inflammation. Uh, 
and we have to be a little bit aggressive to decrease the inflammation at the same time work on a proliferation to break that cycle so what I personally do so I use a magna heal to decrease the inflammation and the magnetic field of the magna heal is about two or three inches deep so uh, that we use it to decrease moderate to severe inflammation at the same time I usually like to start patient on the anti-inflammatory diet and usually because uh, there's certain food actually cause inflammation in the body and slow down the healing so that's part of addressing the inflammation for chronic uh, golfers elbow that the patient ha uh, have hard time to heal and usually they typically have vitamins mineral deficiency or hormonal imbalance and we need to address these issues because you need to have, for example, magnesium, C, D, uh, B, uh, several vitamins and minerals for your body to, to transition from inflammation stage to proliferation stage to maturation stage. So um, we need to figure out if you have deficiency, what kind of deficiency that you have. One of the things you can do at home, actually take advantage of Ask Aster. It's a free online medical evaluation that takes about five minutes. The software is actually including um, more than nine healthcare provider database to really do a comprehensive medical evaluation to figure out if you have deficiency and what kind of deficiency you might have. So think about this way, the magna heal or working on the scar tissue or the fascia restrictions, that's great, gonna help with decreasing those tightness. But if your chronic inflammation is related to vitamins, mineral deficiency, those elements will not replace those deficiency. So if you are in chronic golfer's elbow and your body's slow to heal, we need to figure out what is missing that caused the deficiency that slowed down your healing. Okay, so the second thing we have to work on simultaneously is a proliferation stage. So for the proliferation stage, we have to address the scar tissue, the trigger point, and the fascia restriction. Briefly, I'm going to go over this here, but I have a video that I go over in detail what scar tissue, trigger point, fascia restrictions. So first, the scar tissue. I work on a scar tissue and a trigger point simultaneously, and I use the A3 to work on a superficial scar tissue to break the superficial layers of the scar tissue and a little bit deeper. And then for the deep scar tissue, I use the A5, and that can go, go very deep inside the body. That's why I mentioned it's hard with the foam roller or with the massage to go deep because uh, mechanically is impossible with the knuckle or with the, your hand or your elbow to go deep to release deep adhesion. So, um, so that's what I use to release deep trigger points, scar tissue, and also fascia restrictions. So the fascia system, I briefly gonna go over this because it's extremely overlooked by a lot of health care provider because there's not a lot of proper education on it and actually not effective approach for it. So that's very important because it's a common issue with the golfer's elbow. So what is fascia? So the superficial layer of the fascia, it's like a, a wrap surrounding the entire body. It's like a Spider-Man suit wrapping the entire body. And you can see here in this image, the white tissue here, that's the fascia layer and you can see it in the second Im image here and the third image so superficial layer wrapping the entire body and we have like a deep layer that's divided to uh, th four uh, subcategories layer so each layer is actually have one to two sub layers so we have in the deep layer a parietic fascia that's wrapping a group of muscle and we have the epimycin wrapping individual muscle fiber, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, individual muscle, and we have the premycin wrapping a group of muscle fibers, bundle of fibers, and then the endomycin each individual fiber. So I'll show it to you here in this image. And why I'm going over this, it's look complicated, it's really complicated, this is a very simple version of it, but the treatment extremely simple with the tools. But I want you to understand this because we cannot d release one layer and expect everything else is going to release by itself. We have to release the entire system. So l when you look here in this image, you will see the epimycin covering the uh, whole muscle, that white uh, area here. And then you can see the uh, the epimycin, the premycin wrapping a bundle of fibers here, and then you have the endomycin wrapping each individual fiber. 
and we have to work on that simultaneously. So what I do to release the deep fascia and superficial fascia restrictions, I use the A, A1 to release superficial fascia and deep uh, first layer of deep fascia restrictions. And then I use the A5 to really go very deep to release the epimycin, premycin, endomycin. We have to work on that simultaneously. So this way we want to break the vicious cycle of inflammation and proliferation by addressing all the issues. Um, so what you can do now at home, avoid any repetitive motion that cause more pain. So uh, wait three, five days. If everything resolves, that's great. If not, you need to be aggressive to work on inflammation stage, simultaneously work on a proliferation stage using the Magna Hill anti-inflammatory diet. And if you have uh, uh, deficiency, we need to figure out the deficiency. And simultaneously, we have to work on the scar tissue, fascia restriction trigger points to break the vicious cycle of inflammation and proliferation. So if you have any question, uh, leave it in the comment section below uh, and uh, I will answer it in the future video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button uh, so you will get notification about uh, future videos. We'll see you soon in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below or go to asterinstitute.com.